how does shorting affect the market? The answer is it shouldn't. That is, the guy shows up and takes money while generating IOUs into the system. He's increasing the supply of a parent stock, and the supply line shifts to the right. The stock, if it's a big company, is not going to move much from one person shorting, but let's say it drops from 40 to 30. And then when he goes to cover his short, he buys in his IOU. He does it again and again, buying in these IOUs that he issued before. So that shrinks the supply of stock, and the stock goes back to 40. All his buying and selling hasn't changed anything. It just oiled the machine. He increased liquidity, economists say, and economists love liquidity. I'd like to walk you through that short sale mechanism again, drawing your attention to one detail that I glossed over. So I explained the first step was that the short seller borrows the stock from the citizen by swapping a stock IOU. And then the second step was selling to grandma. In truth, however, the system works differently. The way it actually works is, first he does the trade with grandma and lets her money settle through the system. Then he borrows the stock certificate, delivers it to grandma. Everybody ends up with what they're supposed to. No blood, no foul. The problem is, this is an invitation to our miscreant. As before, his desk is red. He says, I'll first do the trade with grandma and let her money come through the system. Now it's time to borrow the stock. He goes to swap, and oops, he says, the citizen stock didn't come through the system. So he says, I'll just send grandma a stock IOU. In fact, let's say he does that again and again and again. But maybe the citizen who was lending his stock doesn't really have anything blocking him from delivering the stock. In fact, maybe the guy doesn't really have any stock. In fact, maybe there isn't even really a citizen. Maybe this is just a villain building grandma out of her money while sending her stock IOUs. Does this resemble anything we've seen? This is precisely what we saw earlier. If you wondered how it could come about, I've just shown you the mechanism. He takes grandma's money and returns stock IOUs, but it isn't sincere. He didn't really need an extra day to find those shares in this drawer. He was purposefully, strategically generating failures to deliver. FTDs. I said that this was known by names like fraudulent stock transfer and naked short selling. You can see why. The villain has harnessed the apparatus of short selling, but he hasn't done the crucial thing required of short sellers, and that is to locate stock to borrow before he shorts. He didn't get a locate, so he's not limited by how much stock he can borrow. This should also resemble something else with a technical name. It's called counterfeiting. Why is it counterfeiting? Imagine that in this basement, this guy had a printing press running off phony stock certificates. If he took grandma's money and delivered her phony stock certificates, we'd understand that was wrong. So whether you call this naked short selling, fraudulent stock transfer, counterfeiting, the common denominator is that there are strategic failures to deliver. The guy is manipulating the rules to create the economic equivalent of a printing press so he can take grandma's money and send her IOUs for stock. He's failing to deliver what he promised. We learn in kindergarten that you don't do that, that when you sell something, you're supposed to deliver it. That's pretty simple. That is what is left outstanding 150 million to 230 million times per day on the New York Stock Exchange and NASDAQ. No wonder the SEC fought for months against releasing this data. By the way, on the smaller exchanges, the other exchanges, the numbers are more like half a billion to a billion shares per day. Thompson tried to make light of it by saying, oh, it's just some inadvertent human error. Somebody didn't get the stock out of his sock drawer in time, and it's only 1.5%. But Leslie Bonney showed that the average length of these failures is 56 days. Some persist for months and years. Shapiro deconstructed Thompson's math to show that it's really between 7.3 and 37% of the equity the DTCC actually processes. And while it's not clear if the DTCC or SEC know how much of this is going on in the broker-dealer's Wild West X-Clearing system, 
Thompson suggests that it's four times the failures within the DTCC, so the whole problem may be five times the size of everything I've just discussed. But the answer is, who the hell knows? <laughs> Does this seem strange to anyone in this conversation? How big a problem is this? How much bigger is this than those early estimates? When I was a kid, I read in National Geographic about some South Sea Pacific Island where the natives had words for one, two, three, and many. Well, this is many times bigger than anybody expected. Is it 50 times bigger or a few hundred times bigger or a thousand times bigger than what anybody knew? I don't know. Who knows? But it's many. Okay, look at this in the context of the hub and spoke system. Could so many of these FTDs be accumulating in the system that they're just going to crack the system? In another part of that interview, Larry asked himself, if the volume in the stock bar program is so small, why are these companies suggesting it's a major issue? Larry answers himself, we believe that the allegations are just trying to mislead those who are not familiar with the program. Small companies, they're mad that their stock went down. They'll do anything they can to take people's uh, attention off their record. Then there's Annette Nazareth, who was the head of market regulation at the SEC and is now one of the five SEC commissioners. And in a New York Times interview, she said this is just noise being made by shareholders who are mad that their stocks went down. Anybody who's interested in this problem. So that's the party line. It's not happening enough to crack the system, and anyone who says otherwise is a malcontent. Nothing to see here, folks. Move along. Ms. Nazareth's quote mentioned a rule. What rule? The SEC issued a regulation called Regulation Show in the summer of 04, but it went into effect January 05. You see the name there in the left center of your screen. Regulation Show means short selling. It was passed due to public demand to tighten up these loopholes and against the opposition of Annette Nazareth and the hedge funds. Reg Show was supposed to tighten this stuff up. It fails. I'll get into why it fails later. But in, my point here is that fake rule of law is worse than no law at all. And this is fake rule of law. In fact, the SEC put on their website some frequently asked questions for the citizen trying to understand Reg Show. And it contains two outrageous statements that demonstrate the SEC's weak commitment to transparency and rule of law. Understand that a lot of citizens are saying to the SEC, company by company, please tell us how many of these FTDs, how many phantom shares there are in the system. You know, transparency in markets is good, right? So in one place, the SEC website asks a citizen type question, can I obtain fails information? And the SEC answers no. A lawyer wrote it, so it takes a lot of words to say no, but it says no. And why not? Because the failed statistics of individual firms and customers is proprietary information and may reflect those firms' trading strategies. The release of this information could be used to engage in unlawful upward manipulation of the price of the securities in order to squeeze the firms improperly. Well, note that they left out one important word, and they left out the word illegal. They should have said that the failed statistics is proprietary information and may reflect the hedge fund's illegal trading strategies. The SEC does not feel it should give information to the public if it would reveal some hedge fund's proprietary illegal trading strategies. Hmm, that's odd. Reg Show has a second oddity worth mentioning. That is, it grandfathered the FTDs that existed as of January 2005. What's grandfathering? Suppose a town passes an ordinance that says, downtown, we're not going to have buildings over four stories tall. But some guy already has a five-story building. You don't want him to have to rip down the top story. So his building is grandfathered, which just means we're, that we're going to say that this new regulation does not apply to you if you're already outside it. Well, that makes a lot of sense. But strategically failing to deliver has been illegal since 1934. I don't know where a regulator gets the authority to grandfather something that's been illegal for 70 years. I don't think the law works that way. I think Congress passes laws, and regulators are supposed to work within laws. I'm not a lawyer, but I recall that's the basic idea. Why'd they do that? Again, the SEC website reports, grandfathering provisions of Reg Show were adopted because the commission, that is the Securities and Exchange Commission, the SEC, was concerned about creating volatility where there were large pre-existing open positions. In SEC speak, volatility has a special meaning. Uh, Enron is volatility. 
the market collapse of 1929 is volatility. The SEC's overriding concern is to prevent markets from becoming illiquid and blowing up. So decoded, this means that the grandfathering provisions were adopted because the SEC was afraid that if it forced people to make good on their large pre-existing IOUs, it would crater the system. So if the hedge funds generate so many FTDs that we're afraid the system may collapse, we'll grandfather that manipulation. But we're not going to tell you how much they've done it because that may reveal their illegal trading strategies, which are, after all, proprietary. So this is all roughly like a police chief addressing the problem of Central Park mugging by saying, trust us, there's not much mugging going on, but we're not going to say where it's occurring because that would reveal the proprietary strategies of the muggers and might enable someone to confront the muggers, which would be illegal. And we're not going to disclose precisely how much mugging is going on because we're afraid it might disrupt our economy if they stopped.